So thankfully, there's already been a lot of work done in the geospatial realm. Um, there is something called S2, S2 Geometry. This was created by Google. It's this library um, of geospatial. It really, it allows us to, um, to picture data in a 3D, on a 3D sphere. So it's, in it's third, open sourced, right? It's open source, yeah. yeah. So this is completely public, it's open source, um, and it allows you to have data on a three-dimensional sphere versus a two-dimensional projection like on a map. So it is much more accurate, of course. It's much more in tune to how the Earth is shaped. Mm -hmm. um, if you go into it a little bit more in detail as well, it's it's much more accurate, but it's not perfect because the Earth is also not a perfect sphere. Mm. It might even be more like elliptical. Mm. Yeah, but there's that that's a, a conversation for another. No, so you're an day. elliptical Earth. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's a conversation for another day. But it's not like the it's not perfect, but it's it's getting there. This this sphere way of looking at the Earth and and data pictured this way. Um, so we use this S2 library to be able to calculate, make these analyses and calculations as people are moving throughout over, over the earth. And so with this, the fact that it's able to um, picture the earth in, in 3D, it also allows us to much better, it, it has functions that allow you to compare different geographic objects and the relationship between them. So to go into a little bit more of a, a more complicated case rather than just driving point A to point B, imagine, for example, that we want to understand um, all of the Walmarts across the U.S. and we want to locate all of the Walmarts that are within three miles of a school. Mm -hmm. So you want a list of these. Okay. If you didn't have a way to optimize this query, then you would literally have to compare every Walmart across the U.S. Right. with every school right. and make matches. Like a traveling salesman problem, kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It would be around, along those lines. Yeah. So it's not optimal, and it could be a, a crazy, like, performance-wise, if you do it that way, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. we, well, it will work, but it will take a lot more processing right. and time. Um, and so you can use these, these S, S2 libraries to optimize the query, and it will allow you to use what is called S2 cells. So S2 cells break the earth into different polygons, geometric shapes, um, and classifies everything within these geometric areas. And you can use the S2 cells, the S2 functions, to then optimize a query that will match the Walmart locations with schools, but using the ones that the system already knows are within a reasonable geographic distance. You're oh, not comparing cool. all of them, but you're narrowing down the, the matches that you're going to test for. So cool. all of this was completely new to me a little over a year ago, and I was having to learn it from, from scratch. It was incredibly interesting, actually, and opened my mind, broadened my mind to just a new realm of analytics. And then as well, for, for listeners to know, you can access a lot of this um, straight through BigQuery and in, in the Google Cloud oh, platform. no kidding. Yeah, you can look up, if you Love search for geography functions, hmm. you'll be able to find a good help page that explains them. And you'll see within the functions, you'll see reference to S2. And it's using this system. So it's something that you can play with and do on your own. And then also just to add, and I'm not as familiar with this, but there's another system. It's called H3 by Uber. Mm -hmm. um, it's the H3 hexagonal spatial index. Uber did something similar, created their own system, but with a different approach. As you can imagine, Uber has a lot of use cases similar to this. Right. So they created their own system at the time. So you'll hear a lot about the usage of, of S2 and H3. 